Kamala Harris last night was on the Seth Meyer show. And no, for, listen, it sounds ridiculous, but if ever there was a place that could benefit from her fake laugh, it's the Seth Meyer show. Correct the mundo. I mean, of, of all the places in the world, you know, she'll she'll give you the fake laugh when she's talking about people dying crossing the border. She'll give you the fake laugh when she's talking about World War Three and anything in between. But you know, on the Seth Meyer show, it's actually appropriate. Because they benefit from a lot of fake laughter over there. That is a really terrible show. Like, Seth Meyers is about as funny as an orphanage on fire on Christmas Day. It's just depressing stuff. It's hard to watch. But it was vintage Kamala in that, you know, mountains of nervous energy, a lot of hypocrisy, and just weapons-grade stupidity. And I want to start there. Because Kamala was talking about, on Seth Meyers, the border. You know, she's the border czar. She's in charge of the entire border. She's the czar of the border. Has Kamala Harris been to the border she's in charge of? The answer would be no. No. But it didn't stop her from telling us the border was a byproduct of the Trump administration and the fact that there was a dereliction of duty on the Republican side. Now get her out. Get her out of here. I say it all the time, man. We are living in the death of shame. Do you know what kind of shameless sociopath you have to be to make Republicans the problem at the border? Understand the Republicans have made securing the border the centerpiece of their campaign in 2016, in 2020, again here in the midterms. It's like the one thing they talk about the most. Like, you know, if you go to see like Chumbawamba, you're always going to hear I get knocked down, but I get up again because it's their one song. The Republicans, when it comes to the border, almost sound like a one hit wonder because they recognize how primal it is to every single man, woman and child living in this country. They talk about it a lot. Support the men and women in uniform. Support the border. Stop spending. Cut taxes. These are the only things you ever hear out of their mouths. But here is Kamala trying to pass the buck, put on the old QB jersey, got under huddle, Blue 28. And here she is passing the buck on immigration. Clip 25. I just think it's an absolute dereliction of duty. If you see a problem and if we agree that that we need to address it, then if you're a leader, participate in a solution. Right. She is a fraud, a phony, a woman without a moral core, a regular two faced, mealy mouth politician who swings with the wind. She thinks it's a dereliction of duty if you see a problem and the need to address it and you don't participate. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Yo, you are the border czar and you haven't been to the border. OK, you don't talk to anyone about dereliction of duty. That's bananas. OK, imagine that you're in charge of driving the fire truck. Ladder Company 22, that's your job. You drive the fire truck. But two years have gone by and you haven't shown up to a single solitary fire. Not once. But you have the nerve to get on TV and say the other side is a dereliction of duty. Kamala Harris. You suck. Are you kidding me? Like, that's embarrassing. They should hurt on the inside a little bit. Yeah, a little throw up in the mouth. I mean, just so, like as you say it, like it's a dereliction of duty by the Republic. <laughs> and here she is saying the last administration, they broke the immigration system. That's what they did. Clip 26. When we first came in office, the first bill that we proposed was for a pathway for citizenship, uh, was to fix a broken immigration system, which was broken under the previous administration. Participate in the solution because we are offering solutions. But instead, this gamesmanship with real human beings who trust us. I don't have any friends. I mean, what a loser. Okay. This gamesmanship with real human beings. She's talking about people getting on air conditioned buses and shipped to other states. And she says it as if that's somehow a worse alternative than, you know, Allowing them to drown in rivers as she has. Allowing them to suffocate in tractor trailers as she has. Allowing 30% of the women who cross this border illegally to get sexually assaulted as she has. 
Somehow it's the gamesmanship on the Republican side you got to be worried about right now is what she wants you to understand. Kamala is a lying sociopath. Fact checked. Like an actual sociopath, though. Okay, when you really think about her ability to get in front of a camera and address millions of people, well, probably not millions of people, it's Seth Meyers, but her willingness to get in front of a camera and address dozens of people and say the Republicans are the problem, it's Republican gamesmanship. Understand the Republican gamesmanship, which is relocating migrants to sanctuary cities. You know what a sanctuary city means? It means we're willing to take in the migrants. No one is illegal in our city. Come on down. Until they came on down. And the Democrats are like, oh, hell no. Can't be coming on down. It's a strain on our resources. This is a humanitarian crisis. What do you mean air-conditioned buses? We can't have air-conditioned buses. I liked it better when they were back in the rivers. Whose idea was the buses? It's inhumane, I tell you. Time was you could jam 83 people under the floorboards of a tractor trailer. Those were the good old days. Now they got them air-conditioned. They're coming up, putting them in hotels. What do you mean? Okay, it's such fraud. Democrats are so full of crap. They really are. And here she is. She's saying the migrant busing is political theater. Clip 27. I mean, we're talking about people who have fled great harm. They've fled great harm. And they are coming here seeking refuge. And talk about political theater. I mean, playing games with people's lives, with their lives. You know, there were mothers with sleeping babies getting off those buses. Oh, there's mothers with sleeping babies coming off those buses. Again, not ideal. But you know what else they're doing with those sleeping babies? Wading across the river and drowning, okay, getting smuggled by drug cartels that sexually assault them, force them to mule drugs into the country. Do you know why child separation exists at our southern border? Okay, it began under George W. Bush. It continued under Barack Obama. I don't see you doing any better in the booty department. And it went on under Donald Trump. And, of course, okay, they kept that policy in place after Biden won the election. I don't remember that ever happening. But it did. Okay, Biden's in charge right now, unfortunately. And understand that the reason they separate families at the border is because 90 percent of the time the kid isn't with his family. The kid isn't with his legal guardian. He is with an asylum seeker who knows he has a much higher chance of getting into the country if he's accompanied by a minor. He's a lousy dad, but he's right. So understand, okay, child separation is there to protect the child, to make sure he is not with someone taking advantage of him, abusing him, okay? That's why it exists. Okay, to this day, you don't have a single solitary story of a family that was separated at the border and never got back together. It's like voter suppression. You can't show me one legal voter who was denied the right to vote. It doesn't exist. You know the old adage when you have the facts, pound the facts. When you got nothing, pound the table. The Democrats are always pounding the table when it comes to stupid emotionalist stories like this. Put up or shut up. But they don't shut up. When she talks about playing games with people's lives, yeah, incentivizing them to come here illegally is playing games with their lives. Okay, what the last administration tried to do was secure the border. You don't have to like them. I don't care. I'm not a recruiter for the Republican Party. But you understand that the Democrats voted for border wall funding. Okay, they voted for it under Barack Obama. They voted for it under George W. Bush. Why? Because the border is the front door to the house. Okay, look at it like the front door to your house. You shut the door and lock it at night because you want to know who's coming in or out of the house. It's not because you're racist. It's because you're not an idiot. But in this instance, we have idiots in charge. Complete and total, I mean, 100% morons. I agree with that. Okay, running this administration. And they like to pivot to things that tug on your heartstrings. Oh, it's people's lives you're playing games with. You know, how dare they? And why do they want to do that? They'd rather you be madder at a guy like Ron DeSantis or Greg Abbott than be madder at them, the ones who are green lighting the drug cartels to turn our border into a $15 billion trafficking industry. The, the, the southern border of our country is worth $15 billion in commerce to drug traffickers right now. Okay, after the previous administration had implemented a Remain in Mexico policy that completely took the teeth out of the cartels 
because you understand when asylum seekers had to remain in Mexico until they got into the country, the cartels couldn't guarantee them safe passage into the country. Okay, by repealing that policy, because it was racist. We got to be building bridges, not walls. Such performative stupidity. But by repealing that policy, it allowed everybody who got caught at our southern border to come into the country. Oh, you're legal? Fine. All right, well, let's just process you. You're going to have a trial in six months. And you better come back for that trial to make sure your asylum case is granted. 90% of the people who cross the border illegally don't show up their asylum hearing. Why would you? You're already in the country. Why are you going to show up for a legal hearing that could result in you leaving the country? These people already broke the law once to get in. They're not going to start following it now that they're here illegally. Do you understand? And by taking away policies like, oh, I don't know, stopping a border wall, ending remain in Mexico, not enforcing Title 42, the Democrats sent a message. They turned our southern border into the college bar that doesn't check ID. You all remember going to a bar in college when you were underage and you're like, no, no, go to this place. You can get in with like a library card. All of a sudden the line was around the block because all of the people who shouldn't be in bars knew there was a way in and they started showing up to them. Hey, this is great. And that's the people at the southern border. I have great empathy for them. They're fleeing real food insecurity, real problems, real oppression, not fake American stuff. Okay, but understand there's a legal way to do this so they don't strain the resources of our system. But more importantly, if we're being honest, so they don't drown in rivers, suffocate in tractor trailers, and get sexually assaulted by drug cartels. Things Kamala Harris doesn't really care about, if we're being honest, which is why she's going after Republicans instead of the border czar who just so happens to be her.